In 1998, Americans were divided over Bill Clinton's affair with a White House intern. In the 20 years since, those feelings have only grown more complicated. Monica Lewinsky herself has recently said that her thoughts on the affair have changed in light of the Me Too movement. As with Watergate and the current investigations into Russian meddling in the 2016 election, the presidential scandal was also complicated, involving a number of players, allegations, and legal proceedings. On the 20th anniversary of the Clinton impeachment, here's a guide to how it happened. In 1994, former Arkansas State employee Paula Jones sued Bill Clinton for sexual harassment, arguing that he propositioned her when he was governor. A legal group working on the case in 1998 received an anonymous tip that the president had a relationship with Lewinsky, an intern for his chief of staff. That piqued their interest since it could be used to argue this was a pattern of behavior. On January 7, 1998, Lewinsky filed a sworn affidavit in the Jones lawsuit saying she had never had a relationship with Clinton. But she did not know that a close friend, Linda Tripp, had been taping conversations with her about the affair. Five days after the affidavit was filed, Tripp gave independent counsel Kenneth Starr 20 hours of taped phone calls. Starr had been investigating the Clintons over a real estate venture known as Whitewater, but the recordings allowed him to get permission on January 16th to investigate whether Lewinsky had lied under oath. In a deposition in the Jones suit the next day, Clinton denied the affair as well. This turned out to be a key moment of his presidency. That same day, online news outlet The Drudge Report published a story claiming that Newsweek was sitting on a story about Clinton's affair with an intern. It later published another story that Lewinsky had a blue cocktail dress with Clinton's bodily fluids on it. Clinton again denied the affair, this time on nationally broadcast television, saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. On January 27th, Hillary Clinton echoed the denial, arguing in an interview on the Today Show that the charges came from a vast right-wing conspiracy that has been conspiring against my husband since the day he announced for president. As the month drew to a close, a federal judge ruled that the Jones lawyers could not look into the Lewinsky claim as part of their lawsuit. But the Starr investigation continued on a separate path. In early February, Lewinsky's mother appeared before a grand jury. She had been suspected of encouraging her daughter to lie to Jones's lawyers. After three days of questioning, Starr granted her immunity in exchange for handing over the blue dress. As the summer began, the July issue of Vanity Fair appeared on newsstands featuring glamour shots of Lewinsky, a PR decision that was harshly criticized. On July 27th, Lewinsky met with Starr's prosecutors in New York City, and they announced an immunity deal for her the next day. Clinton then agreed to testify before the grand jury voluntarily. In August, the president provided a blood sample to compare his DNA to the stains on the blue dress. That month, Lewinsky and Clinton testified to the grand jury, with the president's testimony taken by closed-circuit TV. He admitted to inappropriate intimate contact, but also said that he had given accurate testimony previously, famously quibbling over the definition of is. Later that evening, he spoke to the nation in a televised address. In a deposition in January, I was asked questions about my relationship with Monica Lewinsky. While my answers were legally accurate, I did not volunteer information. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. The next month, Congress received two copies of Starr's 445-page report on the investigation and supporting evidence. The Starr report, along with transcripts of Lewinsky and Tripp, were later released to the public. On October 8th, the House of Representatives voted to begin an impeachment inquiry. Despite the controversy and the impeachment, President Clinton remained popular in polls, and Hillary Clinton saw her poll numbers rise as well. During the midterm elections in November, Democrats did unusually well. In mid-November, Clinton settled the sexual harassment lawsuit with Jones, which had kick-started the scandal, paying her $850,000 and admitting nothing. Paula, can you say anything to us? During a lame duck session on Congress on December 19th, the House voted to impeach Clinton on two charges, that he committed perjury in his August 17th federal grand jury testimony, and that he prevented, obstructed, and impeded the administration of justice. As 1999 opened, the Senate began its constitutionally mandated impeachment trial, with the Supreme Court's Chief Justice presiding. On February 12th, 13 months after the scandal began, the Senate voted to acquit Clinton on both charges. The respondent, William Jefferson Clinton, President of the United States, is not guilty, is charged. Later that day, Clinton apologized to the American public in an address from the White House. I want to say again to the American people, how profoundly sorry I am for what I said and did to trigger these events and the great burden they have imposed on the Congress 
and on the American people.